just let us know when. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the February 10th meeting of the Montclair Historic Preservation Commission. Notice has been given in accordance with the Open Meetings Act, Open Public Meetings Act, by posting a copy of this notice on the first floor of the municipal building and by sending a copy to the Montclair Times, the Star Ledger, and the Herald News. Podcast remotely on uh, channel 34, Montclair TV, and remotely on the YouTube um, channel. Uh, the roll call, Tommy. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Ms. Bennett? Present. Mr. Heinben? Here. Mr. Rooney? Here. Mr. Reimnitz? Here. Mr. Graham? Here. Mr. Grinken? Here. Mr. Sweeney? Here. And Ms. Rubman? Here. Um, Tom, Mr. Tom Connolly? Here. And Mr. Burr? Present. All right. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, you've all received the a copy of the minutes of January 13th, our last meeting. Seems like it was only yesterday. Um, does anyone have any additions or addendum to changes to the minutes? Uh, none? Okay. Um, I just would like to add something on page five, Line 33, it's under the uh, referral to the, uh, under new business, the referral of 136 Upper Mountain Avenue. At the end of our meeting last month, um, there was uh, some concern about the direction of the, of the automatic gate opening. And I think that right. should be one of the bullet points in here that goes on to the, um, is this going to the zoning board? Yeah, before the zoning board. Yes. So uh, maybe if Tom, if you could add Tommy the direction of automatic gate opening with regard to the slope of the driveway needs to be um, finalized or explored or something it needs to be looked at. Okay, I will make sure to. I'll add that as a, another bullet point there, and I'll make sure to add that to the memo that we send to the board as well. Thank you. Do you know when this will be heard by the board? I know it wasn't on. This is scheduled. It was it was originally scheduled for last night. Right. And it was carried to the March 2nd meeting. Okay. So, so they'll get it. Yes. Okay. okay, great. Thank you. So um may I have a motion to accept the mittens uh, the minutes with that one correction or addition. Uh I move to uh, accept the minutes as amended. Uh, second? second. I second. Right. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, everyone. So the minutes have been accepted uh, with that one um, addition. Next on our agenda is public comment. Tommy, do we have anybody on the phone? We do. Um, we have one person that has called in. I'm going to. Um, there's one caller. I'm going to unmute them, and if they have anything to say, they can say it. If not, we'll move on. Um, good evening. Hi. Um, it's Frank Wabaki, 398 Upper Mountain Avenue. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, yeah. Mr. Rebecca. Yeah, thank you. Hello. Um, my question, I just want to, uh, I a couple of properties, like three properties caught my attention the last 60 days or so uh, that raised a question uh, about the HPC ordinance, specifically um, the very first 
part of 347-142, which is the opening of the, with the historic review of demolitions um, or something like that, or planning board reviews. I'm not sure what the title is. Anyway, but the, the key phrase in 347-142 is in section B or item B, and it says that, um, that really the topic there is about re when the planning board and the zoning board have to refer uh, development applications to the HPC. And it says that um, the exceptions are, you know, interior changes, um, they don't have to do it. And the other exception is they don't have to forward it if the changes are not visible to the public other than um, demolition or relocation. So it's really a two part question. Um, I'll do the second part first, which is, does that mean that the planning board has to refer an application to you if it is a demo? And if we're using the ordinance, Ordinance is definition of a demo. There are different types. I mean, what the HPC can, considers um, a full demo is taking away the facade, the walls of you know the facade of a building, at more than fifty percent. Um, so basically, if you take a building down to the studs, and you're demolishing. It's a full demolition. You might leave a wall up. You might leave studs up, but uh, it's HPC standards. It's a, as I understand it, that's a demolition. Um, and then the other question is, what's visible? What's the definition of visible? And the, the reason why I came up is because there are a couple of properties, um, that, or three properties actually, that did not um, have various degrees of visible. You know, some had obstructive views, um, some had less obstructive views, um, but what's what's the determination or the calculation of the formula for visible um and i say that because you know we are losing some i don't think you're aware of it but we're, we're losing some uh historic resources um resources that are in your master plan and and that's unfortunate um i don't think they're terribly significant but the fact that you're not involved with them is a little bothersome so you know i'm really confused about that and i'll just say that um, right now, my understanding of the ordinance is that there are four distinct parties that make the visible determination. You know, one would be the zoning board in their applications. The other would be the planning board. And then the one that goes directly to you would be the third. And the fourth is the homeowner or the property owner. I mean, if they determine, read the ordinance and determine that it's not visible, by the town's sample, sample um, by the town's ordinances and by precedent, then they don't have to call in to anybody and ask permission. They just make the determination. Yes, there's no element of risk, but as long as they feel comfortable making that call, they can do that. So that's my concern. I'm not looking really for an answer tonight because you've had no prep for this, but I, I think it's something you should consider and discuss whether the ordinance needs to be clarified or we should proceed as this. Thank you anyway for listening to me and have a good meeting. Thanks, Mr. Rebecca. Um, I just very quickly um, address uh, what percentage of the demolition and um, uh, we just had a, a meeting of the uh, demolition it was a subcommittee of, demo, of the demolition to discuss the demolition ordinance and any um, addendum to it. And I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Hyman now that he can just, that issue did come up about what percentage. Um, and uh, maybe you can explain a little bit of what uh, we talked about, Jason. Well, I'll, you know, without getting into to too much detail, uh, Mr. Rebecca, just, you know, we, that is a section that we, we did address. Uh, it's something that we're going to explore in terms of whether it does need clarification. Uh, so you, you do bring up a great point. And because this is something that uh, is ongoing, I would definitely invite you to maybe follow up with an email uh, just so we've got a, a, a small record and we could uh, address it at our next uh, subcommittee meeting. And um, if you have any additional questions, 
questions, um, we can certainly reach out to you about that. Okay, well, thank you very much. I mean, just to clarify before I leave you, um, my, my primary question wasn't about percent demolition. I'm pretty comfortable with where it is and where it isn't. What I'm not comfortable with is what percent is visible. In other words, I have a historic house. If 50% of my house is not visible, does that mean I can take off the facade? Which would be great. I mean, I, I have the flexibility to decide what to do, but you know, you guys are running a historic preservation business. Um, so my question is about visibility. But I'll, I'll <laughs> excuse me. I'll put it in the email um, and uh, forward it along. And and just to, to your point, yep. thank you. It, just just. Sorry. I was going to say just generally. I don't want to get into the the nuances of the specific instance and and potential loopholes. But generally, you know, if, if a property owner going to themselves or uh, where they're going to be removing uh, different elements, potentially structural elements, that that probably a requirement to go in for permitting. So there is that element of uh, review by our construction officials. It's not just a, uh, up to the discretion of the property. Okay. But if, That's if fine. You but, up but what are the, what are, what are the properties? Is, uh, well, one of the properties that slipped by was uh, reviewed by construction and building. So I, I don't think that worked too well. Oh. Well, uh, can I just can I just make a note that not all properties in Montclair fall under our purview for demolition. Mm -hmm. It's only if it's in a okay. uh, historic district or a soon or a suggested historic district or a few areas. Okay. Uh, I don't know how many properties, uh, Kathleen. Uh, it's a certain percent. It's not all properties. I had the same issue, uh, Frank on a project on Upper Mountain. I asked the question and found out that it wasn't under our purview. So we had no ability to do anything. That's fine. No, I get that. I'm just saying, I'll, I'll give, and, and to, to cut to the chase, um, the only reason I bring it up is because Montclair Local ran a front page article about this example of not going through review. And it was 87 High Street. So it's the uh, barn. So, you know, Seven, I don't think it's a significant structure in the scheme of things. You guys might differ with me, but it didn't get, go through the review and it's being lauded as a great renovation. Mm. And so, usually, anyway, thank you. I appreciate your time. Can I just like to make a point though that uh, visibility. Um, is usually determined if it can be seen from the public um, walkway. So right I just right. want to 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 make well, sure that, that, and you understand that. That's fine. That's fine. Just look at the Montclair local article, and you'll see the extent of the visibility. Well, thank you for bringing Please. it to us to our attention, Frank. Okay. Have a great evening. All right. You too. Bye bye. Bye. All right, Tommy. Are there any other? Um, Anybody else on the on the phone? There is not. Okay, so public comment session has ended. Um, and I just wanted to mention that there is a, a, a slight change of the agenda underneath under uh, old under new business or old business. I can't remember where you put it, Tommy. I'd like to discuss the um, memo of the uh, heights that are being proposed. Uh, and I sent a, a copy of that to everybody last night. Uh, and it's only because the planning board discussed it on Tuesday, it was very last minute. So that, that will be added to our agenda. And the other thing is, is that number nine, the training for the review of HPC review triggers will not happen tonight. So we're crossing that off the agenda. Um, so now we'll go to resolutions. Resolution for application 2021-66, which is the Crawford Crows building, the uh, VA building that they're um, proposing to demolish. Uh, 
and Tommy sent this in our packet. Has anyone, has everyone been able to read the resolution? 2021-66? Yes. Are there any changes? Well, he, I, I would like to to uh, mention a change under number four. It says the Historic Preservation Commission recommends the following. I would like to see it say the Historic Preservation Commission requires the following because um, these are all things. Um, photo documentation and written history is within our ordinance. Um, and also uh, retention and reuse of architectural building elements are also within the ordinance. So I'd like to see that word changed to requires. Does anyone else have any discussion on that point? Uh, we spoke about it briefly in our demolition meeting uh, that we require it and it needs to meet with our approval. <laughs> as well right so they can submit something but it isn't necessarily wouldn't necessarily meet with our approval so would you like to add um photo documentation and written history de deposited um approved by the hpc yeah i think so yeah. okay all right i'll add that language as well and so when we do get that information from them, of course, I, I will forward it to you all and we can decide how we want to review that. Okay. Tommy, do you mind sharing that document on the screen? I'm, I, I have it. I'm just toggling back and forth between my Word document sure. and the, uh, the meeting. Yeah, just give me, the, the meeting. Give me one sec to Video. pull it up. Thank you. No problem. All right, so they're discussing right now this number four. So changing this to requires, and then photo documentation and a written history approved by the HPC of the building, approved by the HPC shall be deposited. It's just a minor thought, but we could change uh, commitment of federal, uh, state, and or private funding to just public and or private funding in case there's some kind of local source available. Okay. So Tommy, could you read the new the sentence that was changed with the sure, correction? This is, this is condi do you want me to read both of the conditions that were changed? Yes, that would be good. Okay. So this is condition one, photo documentation and a written history of the building approved by the Historic Preservation Commission shall be deposited with the local library and Montclair Historical Society and one copy shall be kept on site. And then condition three now reads, Demolition of the structure shall not occur until a commitment of public and or private funding is secured for the construction of the project. That sounds good. Are there any other changes, recommendations? Hearing none, can, may I have a motion to approve the resolution with the um, changes? Motion. Sorry, Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. So, moving on to committee reports. Um, the Minor Applications Committee, we only had one application this since the last meeting, and we met on Tuesday, February 8th. Uh, application 2022-01 for 252 Bellevue Avenue, Tino's Artisan Pizza was approved with conditions. It was signage and awnings. Um, design Review Committee. Mr. Graham, have you, have you had any meetings with the Design Review Committee? I have not. Okay. 
Um, there's been nothing with the education public outreach, but I do want to mention now, being that uh, <laughs> we're under education, that the CLG, um, we're a CLG government, and one of the requirements of that is an education component for the members of the HPC. Uh, we, I just got notice, we just got notice that the New Jersey Historic Trust will be doing an in-person um, conference on June 3rd, 2022, down at the Trenton War M Memorial. So if you're able, mark your calendar. Um, there is money within the budget, so the registration fee will be covered by, uh, uh, Moncl by the um, uh, Montclair. So uh, hopefully everyone can get make it there. Uh, in the past, they've done really good meetings and very beneficial to uh, everything that, that we do. I have no, nothing to report on the landmark nomination. Um, going forward to the grants. So the estate section grant, we discovered a mistake, an error in one of the 312 architectural descriptions of the properties. So Steve and I will be going through the um, entire document and making sure that the architectural descriptions are, are correct. In the meantime, Tommy, with the help of Graham, has taken down those documents that were on our township website. So I just want everybody to know that those um, uh, reports, those documents will not be available on the township website. And because there was something that I couldn't understand, um, Tommy explained that, uh, that the uh, reports for the Oakcroft area and the Wheeler Street area were also part of that. Those have been taken down as well. But once we get everything confirmed and making sure that everything is correct, those will be uploaded again to the township website. Um, and to just hop in, if, if anybody for any reason needed a copy of any of those documents that are not currently available, they can contact me and I can I can get a copy to them. Just it is available. It's just not available currently on the website, but it will be um, in the near future. Well, we hope that this will take us two months, right, Steve? <laughs> We're hoping. Um, then the um, the residential design guidelines. We're still working on that, and I really hope to have that sewn up by our next meeting. Um, and I think that. We'll be having another grants committee meeting um, to which Eve, will, uh, who's now on the grants uh, committee, will, will certainly, I hope you can attend. Um, we're looking forward to doing some funding for the um, uh, 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 Bloomfield Avenue. So hopefully we're, we'll be looking at that. Um, but also it would be great to have your input on our um, brochure that we're finishing up with this latest grant cycle. Uh, we did have a demolition subcommittee meeting. We, we met on Tuesday of this week. Uh, John Reimans, Jason Hyman, Janice was there, Tommy and myself, and we discussed amendments to the demolition ordinance. And Tommy is in the process of putting those together, and we'll have that for discussion for next month correct those those uh... um yes i'll make sure to okay. add that to the agenda okay so if that goes to the agenda and um there were uh we have been discussing this all along but this will be something that will be that will be finalized and that will it will necess necessitate a, a ordinance change so we have to go through the approved steps for that but so we need to have it um you know in hand that everyone will be able to uh, review it. Okay. Then uh, the revisions committee met recently, was in the past week, and we met with the applicant concerning 83 Park Street. And uh, Tommy, uh, John Reimitz, myself um, were there. This is, these are, rem rem recommendations that will go to the zoning board. This is an application that's been on the books for probably about a year. Um, and do we, did you put those together, Tom? Or do we have those together, those recommendations? 
or do you know when that will go to the zoning board? Do you have anything written for that? Can you, sorry, can you remind me the, the 83, 83 Park Street? We just recently reviewed it. A big house that has an addition to it, yeah. Yeah, so that, I believe that one was approved previously last year and they were required as a condition of approval from the zoning board. Oh, to come to back to the, re yes. the revisions. Okay, all right, good. Yes, yes so we had a, um, a fruitful meeting with them and I think that uh, that will go forward. Do you know when that will be heard by the zoning board? It's it's actually not it's been up to the zoning board, so it's. Oh, sorry. I I thought they were going to. Uh, sorry, I thought they needed approval of this for for that. Okay, thanks. You guys were the last stop in this in this case, and so you you, we, I think we all agreed that they had addressed all of the, all of the conditions that they were required to. Or will address. Yeah, and um, then we just need to uh to, for follow up. How do we follow up on that? We just, you know, do drive-bys to make sure that they, they're, they've done. Does the zoning uh, uh, people review the actual building department application yeah. to see if they've complied? Is that how it's reviewed? Yes. Yeah. They're referred to our zoning officer, Richard, and he, he works with me and checks with me to make sure that the design that they've submitted is compliant and is the same as what's been revised and shown to Great. you all. Great. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification, Tom. Um, okay, so moving along to new business. We are old business, rather. We are going to um, look at application HPC 2021-13, 11 South Fullerton Avenue. This is a resubmission for certificate of appropriateness. Application has been submitted for facade alterations at the subject property. The applicant has returned to the HPC following a hearing on April 15th, 2021, where the application was carried and a meeting with the HPC's revisions committee occurred um, in, on December 22nd, 2021. Uh, before Mr. Guardinoli uh, speaks to the application, I would just like to do a little bit of an introduction uh, because it is a C of A, so it's, it's important. We have the uh, ability to, uh, we, we, we must approve what they're suggesting. So it's a revised proposal for facade changes to a commercial building. The commercial building, this building is in the town center historic district, which is the largest commercial district in Montclair. Historic properties date from the 1840s to the 1960s. The majority of the structures within the district are commercial properties that are one to three stories in height. These buildings feature a variety of architectural styles, popular in the 19th and 20th centuries, including Queen Anne, classical revival, and, and um, uh, sorry, and classical revival. This eclectic mix of buildings in the downtown section uh, it, it reflects Montclair's period as an early prosperous commuter suburb. This is a quality which still exists today. And today we also have new buildings such as Lackawanna Plaza. And I, I'm sorry, such as Lackawanna Plaza 2B coming and the new Seymour Street Arts Plaza. The building was identified in the Town Center Historic District Nomination Report 2002 as harmonizing harmonizing um, altar building, which is, is defined as constructed within the period of significance, but has been significantly modified from its original form. So um, I'd like to just read something from the design guidelines. So I think it's important that we understand this before we look at what's being proposed. Some modernization efforts were not successful and many conceal, this is, this is not uh, pertinent to this building. It's, it it's talks about the, uh, the district in general. So what? some modernization efforts were not successful and many conceal original materials. Storefronts on older buildings that were remodeled within the past 50 years are often not compatible with the overall building's character. 
Removal of these additions may be appropriate when rehabilitation is undertaken. Replace such storefronts with designs based on the original appearance of the storefront if known. And you can see from the planning report that was included in your packet, dated February 2nd, 2022, that the overall design was simplified from the original design and there are more references to the original building as per the HPC recommendations. Mr. Guadagnoli will present this application with the revisions that were suggested by the HPC. And um, without further ado, is Mr. Guardioli here? Guardinoli, the architect for the for 11 South Fullerton. Okay, I'm here. Hi, good evening. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Do you have anything you that you want Tommy to put on the screen? Yeah, uh, please please let me know what you'd like me to throw up, and um, I'll make sure that it's visible for everybody. Oh, okay. Well, well, it's only one page. It's one sheet. I can pull up the previous plans and the and the current plans, maybe. So, if you want to talk about the changes or anything like that, yeah, that would be very helpful. Okay. Okay. Oh, I have the current plans up now. I'm going to share my screen. That's it. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, uh, following the. Uh, um, meeting we had uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I uh, implemented some of the things that were, uh, were suggested and talked about. Um, the main one being with this, with this project, uh, it was to, uh, as much as possible, recall uh, what was there before, which you could see in the lower left uh, grainy photograph of the uh, original elevation. Uh, and so, so we, we tried to maintain uh, uh, some of what was there. Uh, most notably, the uh, the stepped um, those those uh, stepped um, I don't know what you call it like a kind of a stepped cornice, if you will, uh, that uh, that that ascends uh, across the top of the building. Um, we uh, we we simplified it, which is what the uh, you know was recommended. And, uh, so we we you know we we uh, made the the lintels over the windows just plain. We uh, uh, most importantly, we we attempted to mimic the old archway over the door of the garage uh, by, by centering a new uh, uh, archway uh, over the center of the building, even though the main door is not in the center, but at least we, uh, we, we have a, ce a, a central gui guide there uh, that, uh, that uh, will, uh, you know, at least, at least give, give it that symmetry. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we restored the uh, uh, circular vent that was uh, uh, there originally, and uh, you know, if you look at the old building, it was it was never really symmetrical in, in, on the first floor. There was a door on the left and a window on the right. Now we got a door on the right and a bank of windows across the front. So some changes have been made over the years. Uh, my client's main concern is that, is that they can uh, order these windows and get and get get them uh, get get them uh, uh, installed. Um, anyway, the so the the. There's a canopy that projects approximately three feet across the front, uh, and uh, it is uh, held by internally, but also by some some struts, some uh, visible uh, uh, steel struts uh, on either side, and uh, we we basically simplified the design down to be a bit more austere than I originally had, uh, and and approach what was there before. Um, so that's that's uh, really it. Uh, so and um, can you speak to a little bit about the the mosaic that you you have in, incorporated into this? You mean right directly above the windows? Yes. Okay. What I yeah what what I was trying to avoid I was trying to make the windows feel like they extended all the way up, uh, and I did not. Um, I have this uh, thing about brick that it. it it should look like it's load bearing, and to simply run courses of brick over a, a an expanse of of glass seemed um, uh, it j just just seemed disturbing to me. So I I I, I used this uh, related element, which is a, a, a terracotta or or uh, you know uh, kind of an an exterior uh, uh, tile 
that would recall the brick, but not be brick. It, it would say, I'm a, a wall cladding. I'm not supporting the building. Uh, that's, that's why I did that. Uh, it, and it relates strictly to the windows. They, they are just above the windows and nowhere else. Um, between the window and the, and the overhanging canopy. Uh, I, I just thought that the sight of brick going across the top of the glass was, was, was not elegant. Let's put it that way. So. So it's terracotta and it's not glass, the mosaic. Correct. Correct. It's, it, it's, uh, well, it might, it might be porcelain, you know, but, but it's not glass. That's right. It's not shiny. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it's just various shades of, uh, uh, you know, like burnt umber and pale yellow and, you know, kind of brick colors, but not brick. Okay. Does that conclude your testimony? Yes. Um, oh, I should have, I, I think uh, Mr. Burr, Mr. Guadagnoli was, is still under oath. We should have, we should have uh, sworn him in. Yes. Do you want me to swear him in now? Well, I, he was sworn in before. Do we? Yes, if, if, if it's. Well, no, after I mean, the if he was sworn in before, then he's still under. Well, I haven't. You mean you from from our last meeting or from? No, from um, April of I think it was April of twenty twenty one. What did I? Let's 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 swear him in. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Mr. Guanali, can you? Yes. Uh, <laughs> do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Oh, thank you very much. There you okay. Go. Okay. Thank you. Is there anybody else here from the application that wishes to speak? No. Uh, let me let me check the attendees list. But I think I think no. Yeah, there are no other attendees. Okay. So uh, why don't we open it up to the commissioners to ask questions, and. Um, and then we'll look at Mr. Conley's report after the commissioner's questions. Mr. Reimus, do you have any questions? No, because we've been looking at this. I don't. I. I don't have any questions. No. Oh, okay. Um, Mr. Rooney. I, I don't have. I don't have any questions. Um, Jason, Mr. Hyman. No questions. Um, Jason Gherkin? No questions. El Elizabeth? No, nope, no questions. And um, Jerry Sweeney? Yes, I have a couple questions. Uh, part because I, I am not familiar with what happened at the April meeting, but the, uh, the portion described as smooth stucco, is that going to look different than the current stucco? That's on the building. Uh, yes, it'll be smoother. The current stuck on the building is is somewhat textured. Um, I was going to try. I was trying to make that the, the center part much smoother, while the perimeter parts are a bit more te more textured. But the middle, I would I want it smooth so that the windows stand out better, that the wrought iron work stands out better. I think it it looks better on a smooth surface than a competing texture. Okay, and second. Will you have canopies in the same places that that you currently have that currently uh, exist? You mean over the windows? Yes, over the windows and over the uh, lower level of entrance. No, uh, there'll be no canopies over the upper windows and no, the. No the okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? No, I think that's. That was, that was all my questions. Can you speak the, the I have a question about this lead canopy. Is this is is that metal? Is it a true metal? Yes. Yeah. And it and it goes across the whole length of the um the window. Yeah, it, it goes across the length the, the width of the window. And then it rests on what's the support there, and and then the full canopy rises to to create that arch. Yes, the canopy basically is a slab across the uh, the the, the uh, facade of the building. It only projects like three feet, uh, and then in the middle it'll it'll arch. Yeah. 
And then to, to, to give a, a sense of uh, support to that arch, we have a couple of brackets that simply come out, which you could see in that section one on the far left of the, um, of the uh, page. Uh, there's a like, kind of a cross section that, that indicates uh, kind of a stepped uh, a bracket or uh, you know, corbel that, that comes out. Uh, just just at each side of the arch, but um, again, it only sticks out about three feet. Uh, it'll be a, a metal. I'm I'm uh, I'm just want to make sure it doesn't oil can on me. I want the metal nice and smooth, uh, so it looks like a nice neat a marquee across the, across the front, even though it's shallow. And uh, it'll just have a slight trim along the perimeter. That I just trying to keep it simple. Um, and then the, 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 I don't know what the name of the place is. The, the owner and I just came upon, just call it Fullerton for now, because that's the street it's on. But uh, the name, the name will be placed in, you know, over the arch. Um, um, that's it. Another question about the canopy: the the struts that that yeah. uh, support it for on either side. Is there another way to support it without struts? Sure. We don't even need the struts. I, I thought they looked great though, but yeah, that, <laughs> we don't have to have them, right? No, the reason I'm asking is, is um, I just read this, this paragraph from our design guidelines, and um, I'm just wondering what, you know, the, the overall building's character and where that, where that fits in with the, um, with the district and also this building. So, um, okay, well, that, that, answered my question so the struts because that that really indicates a very um sort of you know industrial edgy more edgy that w wasn't really part of of what was going on here are oh, there I any, other, any I, further questions yeah for i have one other question again uh, what would the uh, what's the style when you when this gets done as design mm. How would you characterize the style of the building? How how would I categorize it? Yes. Oh, um, does it fit into a style? That's what I'm trying to. Oh, I see. Um, you know, I, I, uh, to to me, it's kind of like a um, uh, a Dutch because you know I'm I'm thinking about in Holland and and Northern Europe they have the they they step they do that step business on everything not just not just on the tops of the buildings, but also the, the this very detail. And I looked around our neighborhood, uh, you know, around Fullerton Street, and many of the buildings have this. Uh, it, it, to me, it's it's a, a northern German Dutch kind of a, you know, commercial commercial building. I don't know what the formal name of it would be, but it's certainly a northern European influence, you know. Okay, thank you. But and yet those windows are with rounded arches are Italianate, which means yeah. the windows on the building on the corner, the old old crane building. Oh yeah, the one uh, the one next door. You mean? Yes. Yeah. Not yeah. the mansard. The, the yeah, right. The one beyond that. Beyond that, yeah, on the corner, yeah, yeah. Actually, the two buildings next to it are part of the crane building. They were they were co-joined, maybe forty or fifty years ago. Oh. I, I guess I was I'm I'm uh, turning the building a little more, uh, kind of like you, you're noticing a little more industrial than maybe it used to be when it was a garage, which is kind of ironic because you think a garage would be the the industrial, bit, you know, it's not the restaurant. But uh, since I don't have the option of the arched windows anymore. Uh, and I have these openings. I, I thought, okay, make them like just very glassy, like like almost like there's a, you know, like there's a workshop upstairs or something, you know. So I was trying to kind of return to a a, a, a little more of a pseudo industrial look. That you know, it is a utility building. You know, it does have the look of a utility building. It could be it could be a candy shop or something. It looks like a something some place where they make candy and chocolate or they they make watches or something. I, you know what I mean? It looks like a northern European thing to me. Uh, so I was thinking in terms of that. I was thinking in terms of something, you know, that was, uh, you know, not domestic at all, you know, uh, really commercial and light industrial kind of a look, you know. So that's why I went with the gray canopy. That's why I went with those railings that look, you know, that do not look necessarily domestic. They, they, they look like something you'd see, you know, in, in a, uh, in, in, in a, 
I don't know, a, a non non domestic building, I guess that. So that 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 was the attempt anyway. So. So, so you just mentioned that the canopies are in lead gray, and yet, and the bronze, uh, the the cust, the the uh, aluminum railings you have specified as bronze. Bronze anodized, yeah, that would match the windows uh, that we want to get. Yes. And what is your design element influence for the for the railings that you show? Oh, uh, well. Uh, for one thing, the railings are not um, true height. Uh, I'm sorry, they're not actual railings that prevent fall. I mean, they are, they are strictly ornamental. Uh, and mm -hmm. so something of this proportion that's very flat and horizontal, uh, I, bro I broke it into three panels uh, because, you know, I, I, didn't want to, I, didn't want, I didn't want the typical up, you know, vertical, like, you know, prison bar thing, you know. So uh, I, I guess I was I was trying to make a I was trying to make a, a, a I guess I, I was trying to make ornamentation. I'm trying to you know ornament it in in a way that is um, you know not not too busy, but you know it, 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 it's just the design I came up with for that for that. It doesn't have to prevent people from call, falling, so I don't have to follow the normal rules as far as openings in that. You know it's. Uh, so uh, that, that that's all, and I I don't want to make them too loud or too busy. Uh, you know, no curve. You know, just nice nice straight railing, and uh, just something with a little a little bit of a uh, uh, design. You know, a little design element to it. But that, that's all. I mean, there's there's, not, there's nothing um, particular other than I liked it. You know, and I thought it went well with the building. That's all. And and they sit on this what you have identified as a stone silk cap. So they stand proud of the, of that recess stucco and windows, correct? Correct. There's a ledge there right now, in fact. And so I would put, I would just add like a cap to the edge, to that ledge. So it would probably stick out about five inches or so. And this thing would just be just outside the window, you know, it would just run across and set on that ledge, you know, and, and then mount to the building on either side. Um, Tom, could you, Tommy, could you put the full facade up again, please? I scroll down so we could see the whole thing. Yeah, that's it. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, do, does anyone else have any questions? I, I had a couple of questions, Chair. Sure. Sorry, did I forget you? I'm sorry. <laughs> Got me. No, it's okay. <laughs> no problem. We have um, so many people now. <laughs> I know. Full house uh, um, on our meetings. Uh, regarding the stucco, one of the earlier uh, versions of the plan had a uh, had a uh, I believe the color was blue. Um, what what's the plan color for the for the stucco on the second floor, second level? Oh uh, yeah, uh, I, I was I was just being being that we have the uh, the windows in bronze anodized. I was going to stick with uh, you know like like or, the things that go with brown. Like I was thinking the the textured stucco might be like a coffee color, and the thing in the middle might be a light beige. You know, just just sticking with the browns. I think I think that'll look really good with the uh, with the bronze anodized windows. Um, so it, it'll be a, a tones of brown. Let's put it that way. A tones of tan. And that seems to be kind of in line with. I, I mean, obviously it's a black and white photo, but it seems to be in line with the historical photo. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, now the 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 step up facade on the sides. Uh, does that what kind of pattern is that going to be? Is that going to be uh, similar to the historical photo? Is it going to be a brick pattern on that step up facade? It, it, and it looks like the color is going to be cream. Can you just speak a little bit more to what that's going to uh, look like? Not not sure what you mean by step up. You mean you mean all those little up like steps that go up? Like yeah, the trim, the the you know the. Yeah, they'll just they will mimic brick. Uh, uh, I I can't get brick up there because, uh, like I I can't get the thin brick up there because they don't they don't come in like the three dimensions. You know, like you'd you'd be seeing these ugly joints everywhere. So I decided to just create it in in, in stucco. You know, and uh, so they'd have to be you know kind of formed in stucco or you know as you see there. Uh, yeah, the only reason why I bring that part of it up is the original building looks so interesting because it was almost like one continuous um, uh, facade around. You know, it, it follows the same pattern as the as the brick and uh, all the way up and around. Uh, I'm just wondering if it can somehow. I, I'm not sure if the color change is going to 
you know, changing it to cream rather than keeping it more of a brick color um, would kind of change the character or not. Um, yeah. I don't know if any of the other commissioners have a, have a, have a thought on that. Oh, you're saying to make it all one color. Is that, is that what you mean? I'm thinking that, you know, because it looks in the historical photo, like the pattern um, and the color are all the same going around the building. That yeah. uh, I think that's, um, you know, keeping with the, the character of the building. And um, yeah, I, I think, you know, that's, that's my thought on it. Yeah. I wouldn't be opposed to it. It was all brick. It was all brick, right? <laughs> so it's all right. It was all brick. So that's a good point. It'd be, you know, if you want to keep the same tonal quality of this building, then maybe the colors should all be, you know, uh, a a darker tan bright mm -hmm. this was i don't know this was i don't know if this was red brick or you can't tell from the photo can't tell, yeah. but, but uh instead of having this two-tone thing going on between the recess and and the front the two-tone came from this most recent uh mm -hmm. re reincarnation of this building right it wasn't it wasn't original so maybe yeah. Well, originally I had an arch where there were two colors, and I no, no, that. I'm I'm talking about the way that the building exists now. The way the building exists now, yeah, that, yeah the center photo is something yeah. that's a re a, a, a I don't know, yeah, uh, no, it was see. changed from the original. So I'm just saying, go back to the tonal qualities of the original. I think that's a good point. Uh, I, think I, that I is, like that idea. Like, maybe yeah, you change like maybe maybe change textures if you're trying to you know make it a smooth tech maybe make it a smooth stucco and a mm -hmm. textured you know and but keep it in the same color yeah. closer yeah i, I like color that palette. That's a good idea yeah okay sure. and i'm thinking even the mosaics above the window should be because it looks like in the original photo everything's the same and it's just a very interesting building to look at maybe even the mosaics above the window can match that's that's uh, my opinion on it Okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, so I'll just use texture to, to, to offset it, but keep the color the same. Sure. Okay. I think that's a really good point because one of the um, issues that the HPC had, and uh, we'll hear from Mr. Conley in a few minutes, but was that there was that it was there was too much going on here. It was it 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 should be simplified, and I think by creating a a, a one, you know, the total tonal element consistent will would uh help yeah. that yeah okay. and i would take the railings out also because uh, you know the the other uh, iron uh, uh railings on the window because you know again i'm just looking at the historical picture that that building I, I know it doesn't have the arched windows anymore but that building um simplified i think is still very striking and interesting if uh you know mm -hmm. if, if replicated as much as possible yeah okay I agree with that. I, I think the railings, I would ditch the railings. <laughs> yeah. I, I understand they're adding some decorative nature to this, but that's not the nature of the original building, really. So. I don't think it needs it. You know, the original building is so striking, so yeah. in my opinion. Okay, great. Thank you. Any I, other que questions? Oh, sorry, John. Are we commenting or questions? No, that, questions? That, just questions, then we'll hear from Tom and then we can comment. Okay, okay. no question. Okay, Mr. Conley, you're on. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, so in, in reviewing this revised design, I, I had three general comments. Um, my first comment, was the proposed revised design uses details and features from other architectural styles that may give the building an, an inaccurate historical appearance and this is generally not recommended by the standards and should be avoided um, and i think the um commission has picked up on some of those things already some of those elements um my second comment um the treatment of the secondary de design elements such as the canopies should be as simple as possible in order to avoid visual clutter. Um, and my final comment um, had to do with the new design should respect the existing historical character. Um, well, not the existing, but the, um, the historical character of the overall building that's shown in the photograph, uh, mostly in the materials and the window types. 
Um, I don't understand why we don't have the option of putting the arch windows back. Um, maybe the architect could explain that and the um, the material should be simplified. Um, the proposed new design is using brick stucco on the mosaic tile and the original historic photograph shows that the, the facade was just all brick. Um, and you guys were somewhat kind of talking about that already. But um, Tom, could you elaborate on number one? I, it says use details and features from other architectural styles. Which ones were you referring to? Well, the the, the windows on the second floor, the the railings are more French revival, colonial revival. Um, you know, the canopy is not something you typically find on an Italian building. Um, that's a very modern um, canopy. Um, yeah, the like I said, if you look at the original building, that was it was just a it was very simple. Um, the proposed new design has a, a lot of things going on, and I think if we strip back some of these proposed elements, we would get closer to what the originals look like. So, um, thank you, Tom, Mr. Gordonelli. We uh, during our the last meeting we had within the past two weeks, we had also asked you about the windows. Is there is there a reason why um, you're you're not going with the arch the arch windows on the second floor? I'm using the openings that are there. Those openings exist. We're just replacing the glass. Uh, uh, the arch windows don't exist anymore. They're they're. This was load bearing masonry. I mean, it was, you know. Uh, mm. I mean, the, the windows are not there anymore. I, I, you know, we'd have to tear down the whole facade to get the, you know, to get to get or, or major modification to it to the facade. I mean, I, the owner just wants to open a restaurant downstairs, and, you know, and, and I mean, I think this is uh, outside the bounds of what he wants to do. I mean, it really is. Uh, he just okay. wants to use, I, you know, that. that I, no, we got, we got. All right, we got, we just want to be clear. Well, what you told us at the last meeting and the windows on the first floor are those are those go they're paned now correct are they and i think a i think in the photograph i think now they are they able to be open onto the street yes is that what you intend yes so they're louvered right correct that's correct they, they do exactly what the current windows yeah. do they yeah. they, they they're like bifold windows that, that move aside. Bifold, okay. And they and you're proposing those uh, bronze anodized, so the same as the second floor. Exactly, all the windows would be the same. Yeah. Okay. As well as the doors. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So why don't we open it up for discussion now? If there are no more questions of this of yeah. the. Uh, Can I have one more question? So, sure. so the uh, the answer on the windows, you you wouldn't put in the arch because the cost would be extraordinary uh, to do that. And that that's a question to uh, to Mr. Guadagnoli. Is I'm, that what you're saying? It doesn't exist now. It's a building I walk by every day. So. Right. Okay. So it'd be a, a huge cost. Well, well, yeah, and and it's outside the scope of what the owner is trying to do. You know, uh, yeah. uh, selection of materials is one thing, but 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 reconstructing the facade was not, you know, it's, it's not right. something that he was planning on doing, really. You know. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right thanks. Well, I have one more question. The the stucco that you're proposing that's true stucco, right? It's not the. That's correct. Three, three code California type stucco. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? If not, we can open up for discussion. Mr. Reimnitz? Um, I think John has come a long ways from where this started. And I really, I think this building, I think the awning and the arch of the awning was a brilliant idea to help center this and recall the uh, original garage there. That was, I didn't see how that was going to happen, and I think that's really great. Um, the little struts on either side of the awning itself, 
don't bother me. I think they would be of the same period. Uh, if I looked at this building, I would just say, you know, hey, this is a building that's been through a lot and it's trying to make gestures towards, you know, some images of where it came from. And I think that's really great. I, I don't, you know, I don't think you call it a style. I don't think everything needs to be a style. Um, and I would comment on the arch over the door on the right being made out of stucco. Stucco from a distance is probably less, uh, let's see, bothersome to me than stucco that's very close to my face. You know, maybe that could be the same terracotta. Maybe those are terracotta tiles that wrap around the arch with a little keystone or something just to keep everything above the windows the same concept at the lower level. Just a suggestion. Um, but I think you've done, uh, you listen, I, I understand the challenges of working with what you have. And uh, I, would, I would get rid of the uh, metal railings. Uh, the, the, I think you could simplify that uh, and everything else. I think it looks great. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Jason, Jason, Mr. Hyman? Yeah, I think this, uh... The building has, has definitely improved since its first iteration, and you know I, I, I do want to echo uh, Mr. Graham's comments about uh, you know simplifying the color scheme and the materials. Mr. Sweeney, do you have any comments? Yes, I do. As I say, I pass by this building just about every day, and I would say this design is a substantial improvement over what exists. What exists now is basically a stucco building. And this is a lot more brick, a lot more uh, uh, consistency. I think it looks, uh, I think the building looks great. I also am not thrilled with the railings. They just seem a little odd and out of character with the other buildings on the street and uh, also seem to be out of character with this building itself. Uh, but that may be the design of the railings um, and not so much the, uh, the existence of the railings. But I, I'm not aware of any other uh, buildings on that area or even, I guess, in the rest of uh, Montclair downtown that have these kind of railings. So the railings are the only thing that bothers me. But otherwise, I have to say, it is a substantial improvement. And uh, I guess if you if we didn't approve it, you would still have the existing <laughs> stucco. So those are my comments. Good. Thank you, Steve. Like everybody else said, this is a substantial improvement over the existing building and also the iterations in between. I would uh, recommend getting rid of the railing because I don't think it goes with anything. It doesn't relate to anything else in the building, doesn't relate to anything up and down the street. Um, I like the idea of, of simplifying the uh, materials used, and also simplifying the color schemes. I think this is approvable. Hey, Tommy, can we get the image of the building back on the computer? Did you walk away? Oh, he's still there. Tommy? There we go. Great. Okay, great. Okay. Just while we're talking about it. Right, good, good point. Elizabeth? Yeah, I, I like to see Steve, but the, the building is... <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> hey, I saw enough. <laughs> Elizabeth? Yeah, I don't have anything to add that has not been said. Okay, great. And I think uh, Jason Gherkin? Yeah. Is the last? She's still there? Are you? You might be mute. No? I don't actually see him in the panelists list. 
Oh, maybe he left. We may have we may have lost him. Let's see. There's an attendee. Maybe he. Somebody called in. That could be him, I suppose, but I don't see him as a panelist anymore. Good thing I'm here for such emergencies. Um, actually, Mr. Burr, if I could ask a question, since this is returning to the commission, um, are the commissioners that were not there for the first hearing, are they eligible to vote on this? Yes. They are. Okay. Great. Uh, and, and if it, uh, um, is there anybody online for public comment? Anybody in the public want to comment about this? Oh, wait, uh, Chair, I, I didn't get a chance to. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry again. I'm, I'm going to go home. I'm going to go get that. Right. So <laughs> Actually, I am home. But. Okay. Go ahead. No, bro, I just wanted to, uh, I, I completely agree with uh, John's comments about um, the new archway over the door. Uh, I think that's, that's great. I thought that was brilliant. Um, I really like the design overall, and I think if we just strip it down and simplify just a little bit more, it'll be you know even uh, more consistent with the historical uh, uh, building and and um, be a you know it is uh, without a doubt though a, a substantial improvement to uh, the building. Um, and yeah, if we could just you know simplify the the facade, you know make things more even, um, same colors, same materials going around, I think that would be great. I defer to. Uh, uh, John on the uh, mosaic versus the stucco. Um, that is definitely not my realm. Um, so, but I just think if we can keep things as consistent as possible, I think it'll be a great look for that building. Okay, thanks. Has everyone had an opportunity? Okay. Um, well, I, I think that the um, archway is great. I'm wondering how the metal canopy will relate to the anodized bronze the cut in terms of color but um what i what usually happens is that the uh, applicant comes back to meet with us on site to look at the material so i would certainly have that as a condition uh, of approval that we see an example of the uh of the color of the canopy or, or of the canopy uh, and also of the, um, the, the what's what you're proposing over the windows. Um, that seems to be an area. I understand what you're saying, but uh, in terms of having it not read as load bearing, but it may read as just something that was tacked on there. So I don't really see much sense of of that material over the windows on the on the first floor. And the other thing I wanted to ask about was the uh, the rosettes that you have called out on the uh, the brick. You have call, called them out in terracotta. Uh, what will what will be the rosettes that you have uh, shown around the new windows on the on the on the second floor? Is that all metal? Oh. All that that whole surround? Oh, uh, oh, you mean uh, yes? Between the windows and that will we'll be. Uh, yeah, we'll be matching uh, anodized, uh, bronze anodized. Oh, as far as the, the rosettes between the window, uh, you know, I mean, I, they won't be. Um, I mean, I would love it if I if we if we can insert a uh, a terracotta one, but I, I mean, it might look. I'm, that was the idea was to insert one in there, you know. But, get uh, rid of get rid of them. Simplify it. Yeah, I would say I get. I would say. Um, remove those don't spend remove. the money on that <laughs> right no no yeah remove those um what i'm hearing is uh remove the railings um i'm a proponent of removing the struts as long as you can uh, support that canopy and also the terracotta on that archway uh should read as it uh, should be terracotta as opposed to stucco and um you've already testified it's going to be true stucco on the second floor yes. and keeping the uh the overall color uh you know uh, uh, monochromatic as opposed to uh mm -hmm. filling out with with more colors i think would be a real uh very much a uh a benefit for this and also the door the door um 
is bronze anodized too? We didn't talk yeah, about yeah. the door. Okay. Yeah. And that yeah. panel, the panel on the door, is that glass? What is the? This, yes, that's a glass central panel, yes, as well as an, a transom. Which will be the same on your accessory door to the right. Yes. Uh, do those doors match? They don't match down below. They should match. I would suggest they should match. Okay. In terms uh, yeah, of size I mean, and surround and detail. Yeah, just that one has a round top, the other one has a square. But the door no, I'm, ta I'm talking just about the door itself. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they will match, yeah. Yeah, because the main door looks like you've got a kick plate on the bottom of it. I do. Yes, it's a restaurant. You know, I figured. Yeah, and it's a but it's a it's a taller style at the bottom than the other one. So just right. get the door frame the same. You Good. Know, the door sure. to look the same. Um, and is there any discussion of the um, uh, I forgot what that's called on the the uh, part that comes up from this uh, from the sidewalk where he where it's called out as dark gray granite panels with yes. that beveled edge the bulkhead bulkhead sorry okay bulkhead yeah uh, i'm i'm am i uh, is that a question or uh, uh well i just want to hear what the commissioner's comments are uh, oh, 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 i i i think it gives it a base and what is it where's what's the existing picture what does it look like i think it actually exists it like right concrete it's it's like broken stucco and concrete yeah it's it's all it's all like destroyed uh, yeah it's yeah, it's in, yeah that's really yeah it yeah. is sorry sorry shape uh yeah. yeah i think it's a good um durable surface at the grade that gets kicked and beaten up and you right. see that kind of stone bulkhead all around the retail fronts in Montclair. So yeah. I don't have a problem with it myself. Mr. Guardinelli, the under the brick that's underneath the existing canopy now, did you did, we talked about that in the meeting. I can't remember whether you said that was in good shape or when you once you take off that canopy, are you you're going to be able to maintain that brick? Correct. That's not going to be replaced. Well, uh, which canopy are you referring to? The first floor or the second? This the first floor, the big canopy that goes all the way across. Yeah, the, the, there's a uh, yeah, but the brick that's there, you know, that that's not like real brick. That's like that, you know, Garden State uh, brick, brick face stuff. You know, it's like scratch stuck up essentially. Right. Mm. So that's going to be all be replaced. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, we have some uh, con conditions um, that I've been writing down. Um, it's I, we do have to. This is a certificate of appropriateness. We have to vote on whether the application is ex is accepted uh, with conditions. So. Um, should we vote on with with conditions? Vote on that first if the his, the design is is a, is a, uh, is approved, uh, accepted, and then list the conditions. Jason, excuse me, repeat that. <laughs> in order in order of, of of sequence, do we vote on the approve the design and then then list the conditions or? Approve the design. No, it's got to be all at once. Okay. Approve so, with the conditions. So the conditions would be um, to remove the railings as shown, to remove the studs as shown, to um, uh, remove the what? I'm sorry. What the, did you struts, say? the struts. The struts. The struts. The struts. Well, where are the struts now? That's on. Uh, there. Yeah. Are those two? Those four in the front. Yes. Okay. Well, was that only uh, chair? Was that only if um, they're able to support the the new um, overhang? He, not, testif he testified that they they could support. Oh, I missed that. Support. I apologize. Yeah. Stretch are not structural. Okay. Right. Um, that over the accessory doorway, the the it, it should be terracotta um, or some type of brick. Uh, material in that in the in the archway as opposed to stucco um 
the, yeah, that would be an easy place to re, you know bring that arch back with the thin brick but uh, but never mind sorry i interrupted you no that, that's okay um and the two doors uh should match in terms of um uh one looks bigger john pointed out that one looks bigger than than right should match in um well, the two doors should match. And um, he returned to the HPC for us to review the tiles. Uh, most specifically, I'm concerned about the proposed mosaic above the above the windows. Um, returned to us for the lighting fixtures. You're only proposing two freestanding lighting fixtures, and then underneath, what's what do you what do you have to light the entryway? Oh, I was I was just going to put some um, uh, like just recess lights on the on the under underside of the canopy in the archway, just to light up the sidewalk for, uh, where you come in. And and if there's any change to the signage, are you are you proposed? Are you thinking of putting maybe the name on the uh, you know the the canopy that where it comes out from the building, sort of in place of a blade sign? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question. Sorry. The side of the canopy. The side of the canopy. On the arch, on the arch part of the canopy. No, on the either end. On either end of it. Uh, no, I, w I wasn't. I was just going to put it in the center. Okay, uh, I think that's better. It simplifies it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, would right. add, I would add the condition of removing the little rosettes. All right. In the windows yep. above. Removing rosettes in um, the second floor windows. I'm sorry, why, why, do, why did you want to have those removed? Just to simplify it. Again, it's just uh, it's not it's necessary. More, you know. More consistent with the original building, right? If we, we're talking about removing- We're trying to strip from. this down, yeah, yeah, from all the deck, you know. So we have one, two, three, uh, four, Five and return to the HPC six for for materials. We we can meet you on site. We 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 do that. Okay. Are there any other conditions? Okay, then Jason, do you want to make a motion to approve? Um, we need to open this to the public. Oh, correct. Right. There's somebody call that has called in. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna unmute them now. Hello? We have somebody from the public who's called in on a 973 number. You've been unmuted, so if you have any comments on this application, please feel free to speak up. Okay, um, I'm not hearing any comment from them. I'll go ahead and mute them again. Okay, and as uh, Jason left the Jason Gergen left the meeting, that's not it. That's you. You indicated when I asked for comments before that perhaps it was him. He's still not on. Um, I'm, he's not showing as a panelist, um, and no one said anything when I unmuted them. Okay. So, and he has the link to log back in as a panelist if he's if he's watching this or if um, he needs to get back in, he should still be able to do that while the meeting is going. Okay. So, Jason, I I put it handed to you and your court. I mean, yeah, sure. I'll make a motion to approve with the what was it six conditions that you yes. listed. So yes. Six, yeah. I second. Uh, all of, uh, maybe we should do a, a count. Should, yeah, let's do a roll call. call. You want right. a discussion on that first? Discussion on? On that resolution. 
All right, my my comment. I I agree with all of us. But I don't uh, I don't see the the need to remove the rosettes. Uh, I would defer to others if you if uh, that's the consensus that the rosettes really detract from it. But um, I know there was an effort to try to have some uh, distinctiveness, some uh, uniqueness. So and those don't trouble me. They're they're minor. The railings do, but uh, those, the rosettes don't. But the rosettes, he testified, would not be in, the, the, the surround of the windows is metal, iodized metal. And he, he to make those rosettes, he would like to put a, a terracotta brick in, element in, in that. I, th I think that's the, the he, he would it's have very to, disconcerting. He would, he would have to glue a terracotta tile on top right. of the metal frame that he's getting. So. so you're saying it would look bad. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm trying to uh -huh. I'm trying to gently say it will look bad. Yeah, I'm very. Yeah, I don't think it will look great. Let's put it that way. Uh -huh. <laughs> OK, I I'll accept that. OK. Does anyone else have any comments on the on the proposed resolution then? Okay, so Jason has forward has uh, forwarded. I think John seconded. So yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now we'll do a roll, roll call. Okay, Ms. Bennett. Yes, with conditions approved with the conditions mentioned. Correct. That's that's the motion on the table, Mr. Heinemann. Yes. Mr. Rooney. Yes. Mr. Reimitz. Yes. Uh, Mr. Graham. Yes. I'm going to call Mr. Grinken. I don't think that he is on. Just give him a sec if he is to say something. All right. I don't see him on. Um, Mr. Sweeney. Yes, in favor. Ms. Rubman. Yes. All right. The motion, the motion is carried unanimously. Okay. Great. Good job, John. Yes, yeah. you know, you've been working on this for a long time. So good luck. We thank you. Wait okay. to see it, see it open. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, uh, the question, uh, just, a, just a general question. Uh, it, would it be safe then to, to allow my client to finally order the windows? Because it, it is a big lead time thing. I mean, we, we, it's been a, the windows are okay, right? There was no problem with the windows. No problem with the windows. Right. Yeah. There's no so condition related to the windows. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Kathleen, I, can I ask a general procedural matter? That appears that we uh, vote on a resolution on one meeting and wait until the next meeting before there's a written resolution. Uh, that would seem to delay a lot of the, uh, the uh, approval. And uh, I wonder if that's the standard or whether that could be uh, uh, accelerated so that we can approve a um, uh, the resolution in writing uh, without waiting till the next meeting. Um, well, that's a um, legal question, I think, for either uh, Mr. Burr. Or uh, in all honesty, it's not a legal question; it's a procedural question. Which, in this process, the answer would be: I don't believe that would be possible because uh, you don't know what the resolution is going to be until after this, after you've had your discussion and someone m makes a motion to an, accept the application. As for tonight, there were conditions that in the resolution that had to be, uh, that was part of the motion. So I don't believe anybody would have known that beforehand. So in this situation, uh, it's better to uh, have the resolution prepared, at, and it's not better. It's I think that's the only way we could do it. Yeah, we have to read the actual language of what's written, and that hasn't been done yet. The resolution well, hasn't been made. No, absolutely. I know we have to read it. Uh, in effect, we've adopted the resolution with the uh, six uh, conditions all of which we have a general understanding. The language has to be put in place, but uh, it does seem to me procedurally 
uh, the, the process of uh, approval and therefore the work getting done is delayed by that uh, time gap of uh, one uh, one month between approval and uh, signing off, and, and that that's all I'm saying. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with you. I agree with you. This seems like there could be a simpler way to get from point A to point B, because as time is money for these people, you know, to get something done. Sure. I, I Would totally, that require a special meeting? Maybe. We yeah, can. Mr. Burr, if you can cons you can confirm, but I believe the board would have to be convened. They would to vote so on would the resolution, right. so, so we'd have to call a special meeting between. Right. right. And, so, and if an applicant requested that, we could, but they they haven't requested. And it seems that in this instance, the the big uh, priority was ordering the windows, and since that's not going to be an issue, they can do that. But if there were an an instance in the where, in the future, yeah, um, yeah, yeah I'm right. happy to jump on a call yeah. to. Yeah. yeah, me too. Takes five sure. minutes. Yeah. yeah. And, and that may be the solution now, but procedurally going forward, uh, one of the criticisms of any board is that there's a long gap between uh, the original application or approval. I didn't, This application has been pending for a long time. Uh, and uh, But I think uh, you're probably right. The real concern is the windows there's no condition on the windows so that isn't going to be a problem but we should look at that going forward about means to expedite the uh, the process of uh, receiving the application identifying any deficiencies or needs reviewing it and moving it expeditiously to final approval i agree uh, totally totally tommy how much agree time more. How much time is needed for notice of, of a public meeting for us to be able to, to do a special session? It's the notice has to be posted, I believe, ten days before the hearing. Um, but there's there's more lead. Well, I'd, I'd have to look into it. We'd have to we'd have to amend the schedule of meetings. Yeah, yeah, I, but I, theoretically, but theoretically, we, uh, an applicant could request the night of their approval a special session to approve the resolution itself, right? And a week and a half later, we could convene and vote if. I, theoretically, right? I, yeah, I believe I need to look at the procedures for a special meeting and the notice that requires. Mr. Berg probably knows and, better and, than yeah, I do. And I can I can look that up too, just to be certain. But it, oh, thank you, Mr. Berg. It, it would be cert Yeah, and I don't know if it's ten days or if we can accelerate that. I have to look to to look at the uh, ordinances yeah. to see what it says. But yeah, generally you can call a special meeting so that it takes place quicker than your your standard meeting. Yeah, as long as you OPMA it, um, which is not, is kind of a pain. Just, I don't know, does staff have time to OPMA special uh, or notice special meetings? We can, I mean, ideally we wouldn't have a special meeting between every regularly scheduled meeting in order just to approve resolutions. If it's, I think, as an, on an as needed basis, if it's cr critical, we could do it, but if if not, yeah, I mean, it's it it definitely is a lot. It's it's a lot of administrative work behind the scenes in order to get the meeting. Okay. Going, more than just sending a link out to everybody. Right. I think I, I think everyone's in favor in trying to help applicants, and maybe we just look at it on a case by case basis. Right. And if we see something where you know it's, we're really holding them up, or the windows are six months away anyway, so the project isn't starting. So, but I think we're all in agreement and trying to help people. It'd be good promo for the Historic Preservation Commission. We're trying to help people, so. Uh, and, and that's my sense. And I don't think we have to resolve it tonight because there's such a uh, time gap between ordering and getting materials in anyway. So so the uh, the month, uh, within a month, we'll have everything. But, but I, I think if we do that on an as needed basis, and we should explore it to see how we can expedite uh, uh, approvals. Yeah, and I'd mm -hmm. just like to mention that um, we do that in a certain sense with the minor applications, which also require C of A, um, and that we hold, uh, you know, we, well, of course, now they've all been virtual, but um, we do that. Um, we gather them all together and Sometimes we have one or two meetings a month to to uh, forward those. 
So those can go, and it seems that signage and lighting um, are more, um, you know, of, of, of time of essence that they really need to have that done when somebody buys a, 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 a business and needs to turn it around pretty quickly. So yes, we are, uh, you know, uh, accommodating to uh, applicants, and certainly if this applicant had requested that, we would have, we would have, uh, you know, moved on that. And I'd also like to point out for this past, this last application, the reason it wasn't heard for however many months, nine months between the last hearing and this hearing is not because it was a scheduling delay. It was because we didn't receive revised materials until last week. So it, they, it wasn't it wasn't a procedural issue. It was that the applicant just hadn't submitted anything. So in that way, it wasn't. I don't want you to. I don't want Mister Sweeney to think that we get an application and it's not heard until six months, nine months later. That's not the case. I I never thought that. Uh, okay. I, I just wanted yeah, to point yeah, that out. Yeah. This application okay, is different. clarifying was really helpful. It was not due to anything on the HPC's part. Uh, we act, uh, we can only act from what we receive, and then provide our input. And I think uh, we've done a good job tonight, so. Okay, okay. No, but a good, good uh, food for thought, thank you. So moving, our last thing on the agenda is, uh, oh no, second to last thing is a discussion. I, I sent out, um, a copy of the memo from the uh, zoning subcommittee of the planning board uh, that was presented at the planning board meeting on Tuesday. Uh, I know it's last minute and I hope everyone has had a, a, um, a chance to read it. Uh, my, and I'll tell you the, the reason, the rationale I did that was- can, can, uh, can we get it up on the screen? So we can look at it while you're talking about yeah, it. Yeah, I'll put it. I'll put it up on the screen. I also can, Kathleen, if you'd like, I can go through it briefly and just explain it. Um, sure, but let, let if, me if let me like. just okay. sure. Well, let me just my my rationale. Um, Tommy, yes, that would be really beneficial and helpful, Tommy. But um, that this uh, impacts the uh, historic quality of the district that we just dealt with now, the uh, Town Center Historic District. And um, so I was hoping tonight that we could come to some consensus to write a letter of support for this um, proposal to the, I, I believe it would have to go to the Town Council or a resolution, whatever would be uh, more appropriate. So Tommy, now that it's up on the screen, do you want to uh, outline, uh, give more of a description of what's going on here with this. Yeah, sure. Sorry, I just took it off. Okay, give me oh. one sec. I have some notes. So I'll go through. I'll just go through this as quickly as um, I can. Um, so at Ms. Bennett's request, we're going to go through this memo. It's from Janice, who's the director of the planning department. She's also the staff person to the planning board. So it's from her and the zoning committee of the planning board regarding proposed changes to the height limitations in the zoning ordinance for properties on Bloomfield, Bloomfield Avenue in the C1 zone district. So these proposed changes arose from recommendations in the township's master plan and are really intended to have the zoning ordinance and the master plan sync up to avoid difficulty and confusion um, during development reviews. Um, let's see, let's go to this page. So for some background, the majority of the properties along Bloomfield in the Montclair Center Central Business District are located in the C1 zone district, which is shown in purple on this page of this report, which currently allows for six stories, 67 feet and 55 units per acre. The master plan includes three different districts within this same area and that is the property zone C1, but with heights that range from three to eight stories, which is contrary to what the zoning ordinance allows. Somewhat confusingly, the master plan land use districts shown here um, and the zoning districts have naming conventions that are very similar. Um, so for the 
the master plan, the land use districts are C1, which is the dark purple color here, C2, which is the lighter purple color, and C3, which is the red color. So each of these land use districts have their own height and density limitations, which are outlined further in the memo. I'm not going to go through each of those individually. Um, and so there's three changes that are being proposed to help align the zoning ordinance with the master plan. So the first one is to amend the zoning requirements for the existing C1 zone district to reduce the maximum height to four stories and 47 feet with a minimum setback of 10 feet required at the third story rather than the currently allowed six stories and 67 feet. The second change would be to create a new C1R zone district, which would coincide with the current and anticipated redevelopment areas that are in the current C1 zone district, two of which have redevelopment plans in the works currently. This zone district would follow all the same provisions as the C1 zone, except it would have the the current maximum height of six stories and 67 feet. And this page of the memo shows the Lackawanna Plaza redevelopment area as one of those examples. Um, to note, it's anticipated that the redevelopment plans will eventually be adopted for all of these areas um, that are proposed to be in the C1R zone and that their redevelopment plans would then supersede the zoning ordinance provisions. So in this way, you can think of the C1R zone as kind of a temporary zone district for all intents and purposes. And then the third change proposed, you can see better on this slide, would be to rezone all of the properties identified in the master plan as C3 that are in the current C1 zone district into the existing C3 zone district. So this is, it gets confusing because the naming conventions are the same for both, but essentially taking the properties that are shown in the blue here and putting them into the current C3 zone district, which just happens to have the same height and density requirements um, as what's recommended in the master plan for this area. So then the memo also contains the actual text amendments that are proposed to the ordinance that you can see here and on this page, which I'm not going to go through in detail. Um, but so yeah, that's that's a an overview of what this this memo contains and the changes proposed. I recognize that it's confusing with the C1, C2, C3, that kind of match between the zoning ordinance and the master plan. Um, so just wanted to go through that and try to explain it best I can. If you guys have questions, happy to try to answer them. Tommy, just one thing to add um, at the meeting, at the planning board meeting, the um, we recommended, uh, we didn't want to, recognizing that the council has um, the full authority to uh, say yes or no to any recommendations that we send to them. We decided not to include this, the um, C1 redevelopment zone in our recommendation uh, to make everything uh, in C1 consistent with the four story uh, requirement. Uh, but we did, I believe, add to our uh, memo to the um, council a request that they consider um, making sure that all buildings in the C1R zone are at the four story level. And I think that we should probably uh, keep add that to any recommendation that we send over in support of um, the uh, the planning board and zoning board uh, requests. Did that make sense or did I? Uh, yeah, so I you're saying I that because in the memo, it's it says that the C1R zones would would be would differ from the C1 zone and that it would allow six and six, six stories and 67 feet. Correct. We left that as is because we know that the township is in negotiations uh, right now and discussing those C1R zones. Um, but we wanted to also uh, add a note uh, to the township that we still think that those C1R zones should be consistent uh, with the other C1 districts, that it should be with the with the master plan recommendations that the maximum height should be four stories. So I think our memo to uh, or, or our letter in support of this, um, uh, these recommendations should include a note about that. I have, I have some questions uh, just uh, on the, uh, the issue of history. Uh, what, what the recommendations are is that the zoning ordinance be changed. When were these heights established in the, 
the zoning ordinance. Is that nineteen? Is that nineteen? Mr. Sweeney, they're recommended to conform to the recommendations of our master plan. So it's not it's not that the recommendations, um, it, the master plan and the zoning uh, ordinances are inconsistent. And the recommendation is that the, that the zoning ordinance now conform to our master plan recommendations. No, I, I fully understand that. Uh, the ordinance is the what I call the law that sets and defines it. The master plan is the overall recommendation. Correct. So I was asking, um, and since we are, were a historic preservation commission, we have to ask some things that relate to the history. What is the history of these height levels set forth in the ordinance? Second, we would have to know what is the, the, the height level of the inventory of buildings within the district. I, and I, I don't know either one of those things, but I, I think those are questions we ought to ask before the HPC comes out and says we support or we don't support something based on its historical uh, character. But uh, I'd like to point out that in uh, the ordinance 347.134, um, the overall, which speaks to that we can make recommendations in preparation periodic updating, including but not limited to the addition or, uh, uh, oh, sorry, uh, F, to make recommendations to the planning board and town council on the historic preservation implications and then he proposed or adopted zoning or proposed or adopted elements of the township's master plan. And overall, the, um, the character of the downtown business district, I mean, you could go up and down Bloomfield Avenue, uh, you could see that the majority of buildings are on the lower level, less than four stories. So to have a number, yeah. um, uh, an inventory as to how high, you know, what the inventory is. I don't, is that, does that exist, Tommy? Is that something you can pull up? Um, I, if it, if it does exist, I don't know of it, but it's possible that that was, that was done. I, but I haven't heard about that myself. Okay. Uh, Kathleen, can we go back to your original question? When you're asking whether we should support this uh, with a resolution or something, uh, when do we have to do this by are we this is the first time i'm seeing any of this tonight and i would say it's much more complicated i'm sure you know michael's been looking at it for a long time or whatever but i think it's more complex than just these graphics that i can't i need to i would need to study it a little bit more to have an opinion that's so, a fair point yeah, yeah. that's fair and, and that's mike it. do you know when it goes before uh, when you're the I, council i would believe be they wanted it. to I believe they wanted it for the next council meeting. I don't recall, but I don't recall actually. Um, but I, you're, you're right though, John, to your point that we've had our master plan committee review this. It's gone before the planning board to vote on the changes to the master plan. Um, you know, this came up also because of the, you know, the 10 Elm street project that recently went before the board, that was going to be five stories. And there was a lot of pushback on that, um, on that building. So, um, yeah, no, that's, it, it's a fair point. We've discussed it in depth at the planning board. Maybe we haven't discussed it from the historical perspective here, but I believe that they wanted to get this passed because everybody's aware that, you know, the Lackawanna project is coming, that, you know, there's lots of properties that are up for sale along Bloomfield that could be changed. So this is a project that- this it, sound, is, uh, it sounds, it's all sounds good to me. I just don't yeah. know if I could form a- I, 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 I hear, I understand, I, yeah. 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 Uh, my, my view is that we should have an informed uh, decision. We should take the time, ask the facts. Uh, our role is relates to history, at least uh, not just history. And I and I my quick drive around tells me that we don't have many that are uh, above four stories. There are some. Uh, there are churches that are clearly above. It's it's not the it's not the number of stories. It's the height. Uh, some of the buildings that are four stories are much taller than other buildings that are four stories. Um, and the way this would uh, uh, come down, we would have, uh, uh, there could be an inconsistency. Any place where there's a, the buildings are sufficiently deteriorated uh, that they, 
would warrant a, uh, a need for redevelopment. Could be a taller building right in the area where everything else has to be down to, to four. I just think we need to study it. We need to see what information is available. We may come down to the conclusion that absolutely it's consistent with the history because most all of our buildings downtown, except for some warehouses uh, and uh, the new, uh, uh, new hotels uh, and uh, some of the uh, some of the apartment buildings along the uh, uh, the side are, are they're, they're the only ones that are above uh, four stories. But the height issue is the one that would be a biggest concern to me. So, uh, but we ought to study it first before we come up with a recommendation. And, uh, can I ask, Mr. Sweeney, how would you propose to study it? Well, those two things, I mean, uh, among other things, I would look at the history of the ordinance and the height levels that we have. How do we get there? Second, I would look at what the inventory uh, of buildings that we have, <clears throat> both along the uh, central Bloomfield Avenue corridor and the, uh, the immediate side streets. And uh, I, would, I would look at their height uh, and uh, I think one of the changes relates to the 10 foot foot uh, step back, step back. Foot, uh, step back at the third floor or above the third floor. I, I, I don't know if that's one that uh, is consistent with history at all. It's probably wholly inconsistent uh, with uh, history. So there are nuances here that warrant uh, a uh, review. And I think we need to get some information. Uh, if it's imperative, we do it this week. Uh, I, I just can't believe. I, I know the Township Council can act pretty quickly uh, and act uh, very quickly. Uh, but they certainly don't need to for the 10 Elm Street anymore because that, that's already been uh, resolved. But I think it's, uh, it is a wake-up call. And I think it's one that ought to be uh, looked at quickly, but I don't think we ought to act that quickly. Well, it, my my assumption is uh, we would probably miss the uh, the next council uh, vote on this uh, if we delay. But I understand your point, Mr. Sweeney. Perhaps we do need more information from the perspective of the HPC, which has a different uh, purview than the other boards. I and the reason I brought it forward was. Um, knowing that it, the zoning and the master plan height issue they were trying to get into sync which i think is something that uh you know we can certainly uh, uh give our our uh, not approval but just get, i think it's important that the downtown the central business district maintain as much as possible the the low height and if there's if there's not in sync and i know the zoning board has had to grapple with this a number of times so is it is it zoned for six or is it zoned for four so the the uh reason i brought it up now i thought that that would be something that the hpc would would be very much um approved you know in approval of um but if you Feel if the majority of commissioners feel. I, 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 think, I, I think I think in general it all sounds good, but you know I think I would agree with Gerald. There's probably some details where we might have some opinion. And if we're being asked, I guess we should you know have an informed opinion. So. No, yeah, well the point is we haven't been asked. This would be oh. you know we're just yeah. we're just saying that we that we're that we support what the what the. Uh, Planning board has recommended. Is that well, what the is that what the ordinance says there? Three forty seven, whatever you were referencing. Well, it's um, sorry. Okay. That that reference basically gives the commission the power and uh, opportunity to comment on any type of zoning or land use proposal that will impact a historic district or structure. So we could do this at any time, uh, and you know, while the planning board is in the process of submitting something to the council, um, 
we're not bound by the planning board's timeline. We're constrained by whether or not the township council is going to act and if they're going to act before they hear from us. Mm. And, and they, they acted a two-step matter anyway, so uh, the township council. Mm -hmm. I, I think we probably do have time, but I think um, we have to show that we were, we're act timely and deliberately, but we, uh, we look at the, the facts within the, the realm of our, our authority and our jurisdiction. Okay, so Mr. Uh, Sweeney, could you put together a memo to to uh, me, perhaps, and Tommy, so that we can um, address this before our next meeting? Uh, absolutely, sure. I'll send you something. I don't know the facts, as I said to you, but uh, but I. Uh, yeah, but but which facts do you want to learn? That well, that's. Yeah, I, I I explained two of them previously. Right. One did, was the, the history of the ordinance and the, the inventory of buildings. Yeah. Uh, I, I would add a third fact, but the history of the the height levels that have been in the ordinance. The ordinance are are uh, laws, if you will, that people rely on. Uh, second, I want to know what we have in terms of the inventory. Uh, uh, say, my own visual observation is there's very few buildings, uh, at least on Bloomfield Avenue, that are higher than. Uh, this amount. There are a number of uh, buildings on the side. Some are apartments, some are churches, some are other, uh, some are warehouses that are substantial. So, so you look at the inventory of buildings uh, to the extent it's available. So, Mr. Sweeney, you're going to prepare that for us to look at. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, I'm going to identify the issues for which we need facts. I don't have the facts myself, so. I would like just I to think, get uh, maybe Tommy can help us uh, find that. So, and and as I said to you, I don't know the the one thing that you know troubled me this issue about the uh, the setback, uh, and and maybe that exists. Uh, I I just don't uh, know. But normally, what happens? You have a uh, you have a master plan, and then the township council looks at the master plan and determines if the zoning ordinance should be changed to implement that uh, the elements of the master plan that has not been done although the master plan is relatively uh, recent um, and uh, the committee uh, from the planning board that recommended it has spent a, I assume a fair amount of time studying it and making recommendations I, I just don't think we have uh, so uh, so I may, I may su support it because I think it's probably generally consistent with the history. Um, but, um, you know, we at least uh, should be deliberate. I'll, I will send something of the, the facts that I think we ought to look into. And then uh, we can probably come up with some recommendations. Are you, pro pro okay, thank you, are you proposing a little sub? committee here that gets together and discusses this? Yes. I yes. think that's probably the best way, John. Uh, I would like to be part of it. That's all. I, yeah, okay. I absolutely okay. be part of it, too. So. I should probably hop on that as well. It was uh, being the liaison to the planning board. I'll, I'll hop on that. Yeah. Great. That would be great, Mike. Yeah. Okay. So we'll wait to get your input um, in writing, uh, Jerry, and then um, set up a meeting before next month's HPC meeting. So we have something to deliberate on or discuss. Okay. Okay. Thank you. But I did want to comment. I think you should have brought it up tonight. I think it was good. It was really, it was, it was uh, appropriate. I, I, I don't have any objection to that. I just uh, think it shouldn't be voted on this quickly. We should look at it. So. Okay. Thank you. So uh, last on the agenda is the um, preservation awards which we've been awarding every year. Tommy, uh, did I send you the uh, categories? Do you have that that you could put on the screen? I do not. <laughs> All right, you'll have to bear with me <laughs> again. The, um, we, we award uh, uh, preservation awards every year in May, which is Preservation Month. And the three categories that have, we have awarded in the past are brick and mortar, Preservation Award, Preservation Service Award, and Preservationist of the Year. 
The bricks and mortar recognizes excellent in preservation of rest, uh, preservation and restoration of historic buildings or interpretation of architectural features and compatible design in new construction and the adaptive reuse of historic uh, structures. The Preservation Service Award recognizes outstanding achievement in and support for furthering the aims of historic preservation in Montclair Township, including research development, planning, advocacy, and local community uh, leadership. The one caveat here is that individuals, businesses, and organizations uh, are, all, are eligible, but all nominated individuals must live or work in Montclair. And then the last category is Preservation of the Year Award. It uh, recognizes extraordinary contributions to the better understanding of the township's history and to the preservation of Montclair's historic architectural fabric. Uh, we've asked that nominations be submitted by April 6th, I think, Tommy, April 6th, or April 5th, the beginning of April. Um, April 6th. April 6th. And on the website, um, Tommy, if you could put up uh, the cur uh, an application, uh, people are encouraged to go to the website and uh, fill out an application, and then the... Um, Who's the committee that, in the past, it's been Steve Rooney and me. This year, it may be Elizabeth, I think, as well. The three of us will sit down and look at what's been nominated. And um, hopefully, we'll have some uh, great nominees and some really good awards to give out. Last year, because of the pandemic, it was very much delayed. And we gave them out in uh, December. But this year, we're hoping to keep to schedule and have the uh, uh, awardee uh, ceremony, awarding ceremony in, in May. So, and if you go on the website, uh, it lists all the previous um, uh, recipients of the awards. And, and so you get some idea of what's been uh, nominated and what's been given awards. Um, where's, to, where's, where is this on the website? Where is this located online? Here, I'll share my screen. I have it pulled up right now. So if we're looking at, so if, if you go to boards and commissions, mm -hmm. Historic Preservation Commission, Preservation right. Awards. Okay, great. Perfect. Is the application in there too? I was going right. to ask, I don't see the application here. So um, if you could... When, next week, if you could send me the application form that I could I could get up on this page. Um, do you know what? It, I think that's that that should be in Graham's files. That to, okay. To if it's that yes. should, I'll I'll make a note to find that and and post that here. That, that should definitely be on here because we're looking for the public to make suggestions too. Exactly. Right. So. right. There you go. And there are the um, winners of of last year. We had right. some really pretty very good. Category, uh, people. Yeah, so and I, don't see the, I don't see the application posted, so maybe it was taken. I don't down have the actual after. application. You need to. You uh, need I'm to. I'm sure really... it's. I'm sure we have it somewhere. I just, I hadn't heard anything about it yet, but I will. I'm sure I'll be able to find it. And then Tommy, could you send um, the a press release to? to uh, I don't know who does things in the that type of work now. I know it used to be Katia. Graham was sent a press yeah, a release. I, I have a copy of the press release from last year, which basically just, um, you know, uh, lists the different awards and where to locate the application on, on the website. And then it gets out to, you know, one in the Montclair local last year, Briston that always picks it up. So we really want to get the public involved in uh, nominating. Okay. Okay. So are there any other topics? I think that was the last thing on our agenda. Yes, it um, was. Kathleen. Yes. Did you, we had talked about reviewing that mate, that review matrix, but you had said that we were taking that off the agenda, I think. Oh, sorry. You know what? Yes. Can you put, put that up? That's just, that's in-house work. Yeah. You know what? I was thinking of the, um, triggers for um, I'm, I'm writing about triggers for HPC approval. 
but I see you you have it in a different um it, it's in a different um uh, light. Okay, sorry, Tom, but go ahead. You could go ahead okay. and, and this review should that. be very quick. It's just a brief overview for everybody. Um, just what the HPC's review triggers are. So when things go to the HPC, um, and for some of you that joined a little early this evening, we talked about some of this already, but we'll go through it quickly. So we'll just, these are the four types of applications that you guys would see at any given time and then when you would see them. So first, an application for development um, for a site plan. So if there's no historic designation on the property, the HPC won't see it. Um, if it's identified as a potential historic resource on the inventory, um, the historic inventory viewer, which I think most of you know how to access, if not, let me know, I can show you how to do that, then the HPC will review it for comment to the approval body. Same is as if it's located in a National Register or a uh, New Jersey Register um, historic place or district, it's you guys have advisory capacity, and same if it's a local landmark district or site. So that's for site plan. It's actually the same for applications for development for variances, which go to the Board of Adjustment. So if no historic designation, you don't have review, but if it's in any of these other three locations, basically if it's historic in any capacity identified on our historic inventory viewer, then you guys will review it for comment, but not for approval. Um, so for a building permit only, which it would include facade improvements and demolition, that's not considered total demolition, which is a separate category here on this chart. Um, the HPC only reviews certificates of appropriateness in locally designated landmark districts or sites. So there's no review authority if it's a potential historic district or if it's a National Register or New Jersey Register property, the HPC will not see it in those instances. Um, and then for total demolition, the HPC has to approve the total demolition if it's located in one of those three historic types of areas. So if it has any type of historic designation, the HPC is going to review that request and approve the demolition permit, essentially. Um, so yeah, there's basically, there's like three types of historic designations, and then it's broken out to show right. what review authority right. the HPC has. So, um, this is a good chart. I like it. Yeah. And this, I believe we distributed this with one of the meeting packets, maybe at the beginning of the year, if we didn't, we can include it again in the upcoming packet. Unfortunately, but, it, it shows that the historic preservation commission only gets four bites out of 16 apples, but you know, that's. Right. Four bites and a few nibbles, I guess you could nibbles. say. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so uh, yeah, I went through that quickly. If anybody has questions, you can, you know, reach out to me offline. I can also send this to you if you haven't seen it already. Um, but I think Kathleen just wanted me to, to review this as just kind of a general reminder for everybody. So that's all I have. If anyone has questions, right. feel free to ask. Does anyone have questions uh, uh, about any of these categories or procedurally? Mm -hmm. No? All right. Then I think that's the last thing on the agenda. Thank you, Tommy. Appreciate it. You're welcome. No problem. Thanks a lot. So we are ready to adjourn. Our next meeting is March 10th. Same time, same place. When is the when are we going to go back to in person meetings? Do you know, Tommy? I don't. I don't think there's not in the foreseeable future. I haven't heard anything about that yet. Okay. So uh, if we're if there's not no okay. Thanks, Rick. Um, would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I second. Steve, John, all in favor. Aye. 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 All right. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a good lot. Night, okay. Thank you, Mr. Right. Conley. Thank you, Mr. Burr. Good night. Yep. Everyone have a good Thank night. You. Good night. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Good night, everyone. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks for your help. Yeah. Yep. Thank have you. a good one, everybody. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. -bye. Bye.